Hello, everybody. Happy Friday to all of you today. And thanks for joining me for another live discussion, we'll call it, on what's been going on with the COVID vaccine and what is going on with COVID-19 itself here in Pennsylvania and especially here in Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. I've done these lives on Facebook from time to time. Now we're doing live on Facebook and on YouTube just so more people get to see this discussion of the numbers. And I've said many times that when I every day go through all this data, in tracking COVID-19 here in Pennsylvania, I have found it extremely helpful to understand all the numbers instead of just the big numbers that are thrown at us. If you see all the time, you, you hear the, this number of COVID cases, this number of hospitalizations, this number of deaths, all those kind of things, and that can seem a little bit overwhelming when you just hear big numbers. But when you start to look behind the numbers, you learn more of the story. And I think what we're learning now is we're at a promising time with COVID-19 and co a promising time with the vaccine too. Obviously there's lots of struggles out there trying to get a vaccine right now, but as we're gonna get to a million Pennsylvanians have now started the vaccine process. So that is at least a start. Um, there's a lot of criticisms on that, out there on how the vaccination process is being handled. We'll talk a little bit about that here too. But let's get started. Let's take a look at what the numbers are right now. So a COVID vaccine we'll start with first, and let's take a look at the current situation here in Pennsylvania. So the federal government gives Pennsylvania a certain amount of, of doses of the COVID vaccine. So far, that is 2.4 million doses have been given to Pennsylvania. When we look at these numbers, this does not include Philadelphia. Philly's going on its own, getting its own vaccines from the federal government, dealing with its own vaccination pro process itself. Pennsylvania is the other 66 counties. So that's what we're looking at here. So 2.4 million doses have been given to the state. 1.4 of those have been allocated for the first dose. You know you need two doses of the current vaccines that are out there. So 1.4 has been allocated out of that. And of that, 1.16 million doses have been given for that first shot. That's the number of Pennsylvanians that have had at least one shot. It's 1.16 million out of a population of 12.8 million. So it's a little bit less than 10% of Pennsylvanians have had at least the first dose. Here is where Pennsylvania is handling this different than other states. Pennsylvania got this 2.4 million doses of the vaccine. Pennsylvania is holding a million of those for the second dose. Other states are going about it thinking they're going to keep getting the doses from the federal government. They'll get shots into people now and then they'll deal with it later and keep getting these doses from the federal government to make up for the second shot then. Pennsylvania is holding back a million doses for the second shot. Of that, about a third has been given. 356,000 people have had the second dose and are now fully vaccinated. So, so there you see one of the differences. That means there's, you know, 700, 800,000 almost vaccines that are sitting, the state's holding on to them, waiting to give them out, planning for that second dose of the vaccine. One thing that the Secretary of Health and the Department of Health has been stressing is that providers out there, the ones that are putting the shots in the arms, they should not hold on to their own second doses because the way the state's planning this, they'll send out more of the vaccine in time for people to get that second dose. So there's the breakdown of how Pennsylvania has been doing so far. Again, this week, the state crossed the 1 million mark for the number of people who have at least had one shot of the vaccine. Here's the percent of population vaccinated, a map showing that. So you can see the key here. The counties in the greenish yellow, they're 12% of the population and up have had at least one dose. 8 to 11% are in the blue counties. 7% and less are these light gray counties. So this again, the percent of the people who have had at least one dose of the vaccine so far. What we're seeing is kind of in the valley areas, and these are the areas that have quite a few hospitals. Those are the areas where the most people are getting vaccinated, the biggest percent of the population so far. Other counties are not too far behind, those ones that are in the 8 to 11%. The Poconos, Susquehanna County, Tioga County, lagging a little bit behind, but they're around seven and 6%, not significantly behind. We're obviously talking still small percentages of the population that have been vaccinated so far. One big challenge of Pennsylvania in getting these vaccines out there is, as you remember a couple weeks ago, all of a sudden, everyone 65 and older was eligible. 
And all of a sudden, you have all these people that want to get a vaccine. The older Pennsylvanians, of course, have been waiting for that vaccine the most. They've been sitting at home waiting for that vaccine. Now it's available. They're calling all these pharmacies and stuff like that. We know that's led to a lot of frustrations. We've been asking the governor about that, what they're going to do about that problem. Um, they're coming, trying to come up with these phone numbers and stuff for, for people to call. Obviously, there's a lot of frustrations that are out there, but this just breaks down the percentages of what, it, what the population has been vaccinated so far. Here is the vaccinations by age in Pennsylvania. When we looked at this a few weeks ago, those that were in the 60 to 74 range and those that were 75 and up were by far the smallest amounts. It was all the young people that were getting the vaccines the first few weeks. That's when just the healthcare workers for the most part were getting vaccinated. Now that those that are older than 65 and those with high risk medical conditions have been added, these numbers have been going up a lot. So the dark blue is 75 and up, they make up 24%. 60 to 75 or 74 make up 30% of the vaccines given so far. And in just looking at the data, a big majority of the vaccines that are going into people's arms the past couple weeks are all going to senior citizens. You can see that that breakdown is has been a, a huge jump in vaccines going to older Pennsylvanians. And of course, we know there's lots of older Pennsylvanians out there that are trying to get an appointment, but this does show that some people are, quite a few people are getting appointments, getting the vaccine. Um, when we go back, I just wanna go back real quick and the reality of what we've been all allocated so far in Pennsylvania is 2.4 million. In Pennsylvania, the governor's now saying there's 4 million people that are eligible right now to get a vaccine. So you can see we don't have the number of vaccines here in Pennsylvania to vaccinate everyone at this point. That all is reliant on what we get from the federal government. Now, of course, we're breaking all this down and, and, and there is a note, we've got to look at it all this, is that we're talking about a million Pennsylvanians getting the vaccine and we're less than a year from when this COVID pandemic really got started here in Pennsylvania. So a lot went in to getting the vaccine to be available so soon, when in the past vaccines took years to develop, this was less than a year. So there were a lot of people that didn't think we'd be talking about vaccinations at all right now. We are. Obviously, once the vaccine's out there, there's gonna be some frustrations when people can't get it. We're seeing that as well. But this is how, how it's been happening now with, with the age groups getting vaccinated. Now I wanna move on to COVID itself. Kind of differentiating, we have the vaccine numbers here, we've got the COVID numbers here. So let's go into what's going on with COVID-19 in Pennsylvania as we speak. Here's the latest numbers as we track new cases in Pennsylvania. Today, there was about 4,000 new cases that were added here in the state. So that has been the case this past week where we're right around that 4,000 mark. So, so when you look at this, here was back in the spring, some of this may be a little bit repetitive for some of you that have watched some of these Facebook Lives before, but I'm just gonna go through the rationale of how these numbers work just to make sure that you understand kind of what's been going on. This was back in the spring when obviously we were in all the lockdowns and things like that and it seemed really bad, but you don't see a big bump here. This is the fall into the winter and you do see the big bump. Well, the explanation for that is that back here, there just wasn't as much testing as there was now. You all probably know someone in the spring that was sick, they couldn't get a test, didn't know if they necessarily had COVID back then or not because they couldn't get that test. And they were just told, assume you have it, stay home. So they wouldn't officially have registered there. There's a lot of testing being done now. So obviously the sick are able to get a test, that's showing up. And also we saw another surge in sickness. And, and as we'll look at the hospitalization numbers, a lot of people were getting really sick. So let's, let's take a look at how this is broken down. This is right before Christmas, right after Thanksgiving, where we were up around, um, average around 10,000. These peaks were more than 12,000 cases a day. Now we are averaging around 4,000 cases a day. So just in the past, let's say two months, we have declined from a rate of 10,000 a day down to 4,000 a day. So we're, we're less than half of what we um, were at back at the peak. So, so that is a big decline. That decline has been continuing. These are the cases today in Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. And as you can see, lower numbers than what we've been seeing for quite a while now. Look at Luzerne, 57. Lackawanna, 52. Look at all the single digit cases, five in Bradford County. They haven't had a, a single digit number that low since November. 
in Bradford County. 10, 16, a lot lower numbers here. I'm just, I not, don't mean to check a text message during my Facebook Live, but just want to make sure um, that this is working okay. So as we go through um, these numbers, you can see um, here is Montour County, Sullivan, Wyoming, and let's look at what the impact is on the WNEP viewing area as a whole. So here's a map that, or a graph that's similar to what we saw with the Pennsylvania new cases. There's that bump in the spring, low all summer. We saw a big, oh, we saw a big spike around Christmas time, a little dip, not as big a spike after Christmas as many people were predicting. And then we've been going down since then, trending downward since then. That's the 20 counties that make up our WNEP viewing area. The percent testing positive. So this is the percent of people that go to get a test, aren't feeling well, go to get a test, come back and get that test. So when we look at that percent testing positive, Carbon County, 13.8, Columbia, 12.2. So, so those are numbers that are the highest in our area right now. Those are significantly less than what we were seeing about a month ago when there were quite a few counties that were above 20%. So what these numbers are saying is that the amount of people testing are 13% are having a positive result. So that means there is quite a bit of um, community spread that's out there, but nothing like what we were seeing just a month, six weeks ago. So these are all improving. Of note, Lackawanna and Luzerne, they're below that 9%. 5% is the level we keep hearing is the concerning level. You can see that these counties are um, getting lower and lower, getting closer to that. We have quite a few counties that are getting closer again to that 5%. Here's the COVID hospitalizations. So this is how you can kind of tell how sick are people getting with COVID. There was the speak, spike we saw in the spring. It was low all summer long, went up during the fall. We peaked in mid-December with more than 6,000 people hospitalized in mid-December. And then there's been quite the decline of hospitalizations that has happened since then. Governor Wolf told us back in December, the big concern in Pennsylvania was that hospitals would get overwhelmed. Hospitals didn't get overwhelmed. The, that decline has continued and hospitals now have quite a bit more capacity than what they were dealing with before. We're now down to about, I think the number today was 2,500 people in hospitals across the state. That is less than half what we saw at the peak in mid-December. So promising signs there as well. Fewer people are in the hospital with COVID right now. And so here's the hospitalizations across our area. Luzerne at 86, Montour at 66. That's where Geisinger Danville is in Montour. Lackawanna 48, Schuylkill 45. These are the numbers of COVID patients in hospitals right now. So when you think of the size of a county, I mean, Luzerne County has 320,000 people. These are small numbers compared to the grand scheme of things. Obviously, hospitals only have so much capacity. So that was a concern that when you have 150, 160 COVID patients in a hospital, there's only so many hospital beds that are there. But these numbers have all been going down and actually going down quite a bit. Luzerne and Montour are off. Montour is down about 100 patients in the last month. Luzerne's about the same. So a big difference that we're seeing in the COVID hospitalizations. COVID deaths. So obviously, the worst case scenario is the, the people that, that pass away and have COVID. So let's take a look at how that has played out in Pennsylvania. This was back in the spring. Obviously, we see this peak is here compared to what we were seeing with new cases because not as many people were getting tested back then, but a similar amount of people were dying back then. So that's how we know that there was a prevalent amount of COVID-19 back then. We were down low during the summer. We hit a peak of um, in the range of around 230 deaths on our peak days right around Christmas. And I, I said this the last time I did a live um, like this is that it was sad looking at the data numbers because it's like this peak is December 22nd, that peak is New Year's Eve. So you know that a lot of people were passing away, away around the holidays. And, and these are deaths that are considered with COVID. And I've clarified that in the past that people obviously have what they call comorbidities. And most of the people that are dying of COVID have numerous other health issues that are being counted as well. But if you're, if you're diagnosed positive result of COVID-19, it is a COVID death and that is counted here. But you can see we have been having quite a decline on the COVID deaths as well 
back down into the level where we were in the spring. And now I'm starting to see evidence we're going even lower than that. Um, as we look at this is the date that people died, that how we track it on this. Um, now let's move ahead to the counties around our area. And this you can see Luzerne County. Luzerne County is our biggest county. It has the most cases of COVID. That's just because it's the biggest county. A lot of our counties are about the same rate of people having the disease based on their population. And Luzerne saw the big spike um, back after Thanksgiving. It dipped down around Christmas, a little bit of a spike after Christmas. It has been trending steadily downward. Luzerne County, the past few days, less than 100 cases per day. That hasn't happened for this many days in a row in a while. So definite progress in Luzerne County. Lackawanna County was on a steep uprise. The rate was rising and rising in the fall. Right after the holidays, it has been on a just as steep, if not steeper decline in Lackawanna County. So promising signs there. Schuylkill County started its rise in September. All fall, Schuylkill County rose. Schuylkill County has been declining since after New Year's and Schuylkill County has seen some of its lowest numbers in months just in the past week. So prom promising signs in Schuylkill County. Lycoming County, big peak there, around 150 a day. That was right in the middle of December. It has been declining since then. It's seeing about a third of the average for new cases per day compared to what it was seeing back in um, mid-December. Monroe County, the Poconos. It's interesting because Monroe County saw our first spike it saw a big spike. One note about Monroe County though, when you look at the percent of the population that has had COVID, Monroe County is one of our lowest. Only about 5% of the population there has had COVID. The counties range between about 5% of the population that's tested positive to about 10% of the population. But Monroe County, similar thing, on a decline since after New Year's. Northumberland County was up around the holidays. It's been declining. It's kind of plateaued a little bit, but when you look, these numbers are different for each of these counties based on the size of the population. So Northumberland County is a little bit smaller than some of those other counties that we showed. And Union County again saw a few spikes. This was back in the fall when um, some prisons and nursing homes were having issues, but again, it is on a decline there. Columbia County, same thing. Bloomsburg University helped live, lead a rise there earlier this year. It has been trending downwards. And Bradford County, one that saw a significant rise and was staying at a high level for a while. It is going down. It has seen some of its lowest number, numbers. I don't know if you can see this, but that five new cases it had today, it's been back since November that it had a, a number that low. So promising in Bradford County as well. So that's pretty much our update, breaking down all these numbers here on YouTube. And I, I hope that um, you found this helpful. I, like I said, it's a lot of promising signs that we're starting to see stack up. Uh, it starts to make sense that we're to a point now where so many people are getting the vaccine, even though there's frustrations in getting it, that eventually that's going to start to have a ripple effect in people testing positive. And we're seeing that across the country, we are seeing that the cases went up like this around the holidays and they're on a steep decline, just like we saw with Pennsylvania. Same thing with hospitalizations, same thing with deaths. There are a lot of promising sides nationwide as we look at this. So I hope you found this informative. Personally, like I said at the beginning, I find it interesting to get behind all this data and see what's going on. I hope you do too. So I'll be back with more of these updates as we go forward, and I hope that you tune in every night at 5.30 when we break it down a little bit more. Most importantly, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay tuned. We'll see you later, everyone. Bye now.